Just to set up the story, the setting is Tiberius on the River Jordan in the second century under Roman rule. My name is Rabbi Yochanan, and my parents died when I was very young. In fact, my father died before I was even born. I was raised by my grandfather, and he instilled in me a love of Torah and made sure that I went to the study hall and I studied under Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, who was a great, wise man. I was very fortunate to be encouraged to use my mind. Now, I was an average student, but with lots of hard work, many hours of study, I, I actually became a scholar. And with some of the money that I was left to me. I, it wasn't much. I sold all of those things in order to set up an academy in Tiberias to teach other students. Now my fame grew because I opened the school to children of all walks of life, poor and wealthy, and I was dedicated to these kids. After a hot a very long day studying, a hot summer day, I decided to go down to the Jordan River and cool off. So I was floating down the Jordan River and I noticed all of a sudden there was a band of highwaymen that stopped at my pile of clothes. And the leader was watching me as I floated down the river. He jumped off his horse, he ripped off his clothes, and with a few strokes, mighty strokes, he was upon me. His face changed from a playful kind of interest to surprise. He thought I was a woman. So I said to him, your strength should be for Torah. And he responded, your beauty should be for women. Well, this man, Rish Lakish, he had been a gladiator in times past, fighting wild beasts. He was a man with muscles rippling and his strength was renowned. He then became a leader of bandits. This group of men was well known to this people of Tiberias who were quite wary of them, but they also were quite admired for their strength to tolerate all sorts of, of negatives, even under Roman occupation. They seemed to have no fear. I realized that this man was drawn to me in some way and I could influence his behavior. So I said, if you leave your ways, if you leave behind your thieving. My sister is more beautiful than me. She would be a good match for you. Once again, his facial expression changed. You could see that he was transforming in the water beside me. He had once studied Torah and then he had made bad decisions along the way. And he decided right then and there that he would leave behind his swords, his knives, his evil ways and follow me out of the water. It was astonishing, really. He left behind his sword. The men regarded him and wondered why he was following this thin, nerdy guy, but he came with me. We went to the study hall and for months and months and months, this man was transformed. This man of physical power and who was known for his fighting of, of beasts and for his physical prowess suddenly seemed to be 
very bright. He was able to take questions and, and bring new points of view in ways that I'd never imagined before. The students were very respectful of him and they wanted to hear stories of his battles with the wild beasts. He became quite popular. He did marry my sister after all. They seemed to be really happy. I too married. We developed a relationship that was unbreakable. We studied from dawn till dusk. We became partners. We were studying in Hevruta, this respectful partnership where it was safe to ask questions, to argue, to debate, to be present for each other. But as time went on, I, I saw that my life had, had altered. The students seemed to respect him more than they respected me. I, I was the one that started the academy. I was the one that made him change his ways. I, I, I was beginning to get annoyed by his funny accent, which at first I found endearing, and now is just annoying. And he had beautiful children. He had one child, and then I had another, a child. But my child died. He had another child, and yet again I had a child. But my child died. I had ten children that died. I carried in my pocket the bone of my tenth child little finger. I was a broken man. I, I had no joy any longer. I, I couldn't, I couldn't bear to see things working so well for Resh Lakish. How, how could it work so well? He was now rabbi. Yes, he, he had risen. And in fact, he, he surpassed me in his the respect of the students. And one day we were debating details of the Talmud that discuss whether an item that is uh, forged in fire or dipped in water has the potential for having purity or impurity. Details that the ta of Talmud that we tend to, to focus upon. He said it was the water that was able to purify. And I said it was fire. And he said, no, he was sure it was water. For he had been transformed in water. And I looked at him and I said, oh, a robber knows his tools. Well, in Jewish tradition, one does not remind someone of past transgressions. No, that's, that is not done, but that is what I did. And Resh Lakish looked at me and was so hurt. He said, I was a master of thieves and now I'm a master of students. What, what have you done for me? Why have I come here? And I said, well, I brought you under the wings of the Shekhinah, one of the names of the Holy One. Well, he was so upset by my words that pierced this man who had battled wild beasts was was so upset by my words they cut deep he left the study hall all the other students were alarmed they knew something terrible would happen when i had said those horrible words my sister came with her children and, and begged me, please do something, retract your words, don't make me a widow. And I said, the Lord will take care of the orphans. That was pretty heartless. Days passed and Rabbi Shimon Bar Lakish was no more. I grieved this man that I loved. 
I tore my cloak. I could not study. I could not concentrate. The other students brought in an, a, a learned scholar to, to try to distract me from my grief. And this man was a yes man. He didn't have his, a, a, an individual thought. Everything he said, I said, he said, oh, yes, you are right, Rabbi. You're so brilliant, Rabbi. He didn't compare to Resh Lakish. I, I, I couldn't believe what I had done. I left the study hall and I started to wander and my mind wandered. My words had damaged his life and mine. Mm -hmm.